Well, good morning. It's good to see you guys, and welcome to those that are online with us today. Now, I, I love that video that they put together with prayer, because we don't think of prayer as dangerous, do we, and ominous, you know, sound to it. But, you know, it really is. It really is. I think that the purpose of our lives is to partner up with the Lord Jesus Christ, right, and to accomplish his will here on earth. And we must be able to hear him and to follow his lead. And that's why uh, we changed everything when we started hitting this rough season that each and every one of us is walking through, right? We decided that we were going to push prayer forward because prayer is the most dangerous, the most ominous, the greatest thing that we can do, okay? That's where real change takes place. And so Pastor Andy, over the past couple of weeks, he's been talking to you about prayer, right? He talked to us about how we can become more effective in it. He even gave us little fun uh, ways of remembering to pray, uh, you know, different techniques. And that's all great, and I love that. But today I want to build on a little different direction because I have this, you know, this belief deep down in my soul that prayer isn't just a one-way communication. I'm talking to you, God, right? But that it's actually a two-way conversation, and I believe that God wants to talk to us. And so I want you to be able to uh, understand what he's saying and how to hear him, right? So I'm going to take today's message, and I'm going to try to give you what I know that works for me and that will perhaps help you to discover his voice separate from yourselves and from the enemy and from the, the clutter of the world screaming at us, okay? So as it is my custom, I always want to start out and invite the Holy Spirit's presence even more. I felt him. He kissed me when I walked in. I could just feel him in this room. But we're just going to ask him to come even more. So bow your heads with me. Father God, this is your next 30 minutes. I ask that you would take these words, Father, from a simple person, and that you would sow them in the hearts of those that have ears to hear what your Spirit is saying this morning. Father, we are in need of you. We are a people that are amongst uh, some difficult times in and we can't even remember how, how <laughs> another time and place that was more difficult. And if we ever needed you, we need you now, Lord. We need you to move like you never have. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and that you would open the hearts of each man and each woman here and on this online service that we're doing, that they would be empowered and emboldened and they would be strengthened, Father, in their soul to go out and to make the difference that you want us to. So now, Holy Spirit, just come. Come and take over and do all that you will do, Father, with us. We wait to hear you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, guys, so we are going to talk about uh, this uh, dangerous prayers that we can pray. And today I do want to talk to you about uh, being able to define God's voice in the midst of all that's going on. And uh, I noticed that when Jesus walked the earth, Jesus actually um, uh, liked to teach in parables, right? And, of course, we all know that a parable is just a simple story, isn't it? It's just a simple story that illustrates uh, spiritual principles. And so Jesus used this technique often because he said, even though hearing, not everyone would perceive what's going on. And so what he was doing is he was putting out the information, and most people can hear it, but the deeper, richer meanings, we have to really ponder those, and we need his help to figure them out. And so the parable I want to bring to you today to talk to you that's going to help us to be able to understand how to hear his voice better is this parable of the sower. It's the parable of the sower, okay? And so I want to bring that to you, and then once we look at it, I want to show you what Jesus' interpretation is of it and how that relates to our lives. So let's go ahead. The first thing we're going to look at is this parable, and I'll read it for you. It says, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell among the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it. Some fell on rocky, and, rocky on rock, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plant. Now here comes the fourth kind here. Still, another seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sowing. And so this parable that we see here, uh, Jesus is displaying it for us because he wants to talk to us about its meaning and how it impacts our lives, right? And so right after he does this, right after he gives us this parable, he says this. 
Jesus who says this, who has what? Ears. That's right. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. And so again, it's this challenge to you and I, not just to hear, but actually to receive the understanding of it, right? So he goes, get ready to get this understanding. And so there's a deeper meaning here that we want to grab hold of. Now, I love the disciples because the disciples, they can't get it, <laughs> right? They're kind of like, oh, man, this is hard. So in the Bible, we see uh, later on after this parable, the disciples go to him and say, hey, Jesus, psst, help. <laughs> Can you tell us what the spiritual meaning is? We are not getting it. And I love it because Jesus begins to explain it. He interprets it for him. Now, why this is so important to you and I is because that's how we are as disciples. You know, 2,000 years later, we still read God's work and we go, we don't quite get it, right? And so we need to do what the original disciples did. We need to go to Jesus and say, what does this mean? What does this mean, right? And so this will be very important for you to grab hold of that. So when Jesus starts to interpret the uh, the parable for the disciples, for us, he says, listen, first, he says first that God is the farmer, the seed, the seed is my word, right? And then he says the soil, the soil is the condition of the soul. And as we all know, the soul is your emotions and your mind, right? Your heart and your mind. And so he says the condition of the soul. And you see these four types of conditions of the soil they represent, for you and me, they represent the attitudes by which we approach God, by which we approach, uh, you know, his word. And so it becomes imperative that we are able to look at that and deal with that, okay? So I'm going to talk to you about four attitudes you need to hear God, and it's on your outline, right? And so you can pull that up. The first attitude that gets highlighted is this fact that we tend to have a closed mind, and it's going to require us to be able to cultivate an open mind. We have to cultivate an open mind, right? One that's open to receive the fact that Jesus wants to talk to us, and we're not closed because of that. Now, if you remember in our parable, the first, uh, the first thing we read, right? You can go back and look at it. The first thing we read was that Jesus says that the farmer's walking, and he's just kind of scattering his, his seed, right? Just all along the ground, he's scattering the seed. And so it says that some fell on the pathway, a pathway is a place where it's been walked over a lot. And what happens is that soil gets so compacted that when the seed hits it, it bounces. It can't penetrate, right? And so it bounces along, and it is just on the surface. And what happens is the birds of the air, they come in, swoop in, and they eat it, right? That's what we read. Now, here's Jesus' interpretation of it. In verse 12, he says, Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved, right? So what he's talking about there is this, uh, this hard, hard place that people have inside of themselves, and it's usually where people have trampled over them, right? It's the places that uh, our trust has been eroded or, or people have hurt us, and so there's a hardness there, right? The greatest example of this that I can show you is when I talk to people and I start to explain to them the uh, gift of salvation that's been given to us, that uh, God himself loved us so much that, and he wanted us to be united with him. But you and I, our choices all through history has shown that we are sinners by nature, right? And so that separated us from a holy God. And because of that separation from a holy God, we have uh, sinned all the more, and we've been lost, and we've been crushing each other. That's basically what has happened here. And, but God, in his kindness towards us, he said, aha, uh -huh. he looked at us, and he had compassion. And so he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, right, to come to earth for us. And here, when Jesus was here, he not only taught us, but he decided that he would take on the sins of the world. That means our sins. That means Sharon Mead's sins. That means every time I lie, every time um, I, I don't love somebody like they're supposed to, every time I fall into a racism remark or I fall into something that I know God says that's not right, every time that I do those things, those are my sins that Jesus got on the cross and he was nailed and he died for my sins and for your sins. And this is oh so powerful. And in doing that, he didn't just die. 
he also was resurrected. That means on the third day he rose again, right? Which now he sits at the right hand of the Father. And my friends, he intercedes for you and for me, right? He intercedes because his great love for us. And so this message is so compelling. How could anybody say, nah, I won't do that. No, thank you. It's because of the hard heart. It's the place that they can't trust. They can't really believe, and so they're hard in their heart, right? And so they reject the word. And just like I gave it to you, it hits people, and it hits on the surface, and it skids. And then who comes in? The bird, right? The bird it represents the devil. The devil wants to come, and he wants to rob the word that God has given you. And so there are some of you here, and you feel very distant from God. And I just explained the gift of salvation. Today is the day that the Father wants you to come home. Today is the day that he wants you to step across that line, right? And I'm going to cycle back around and give you an opportunity to pray with me later to allow that seed to penetrate your heart that's so closed. Because I know deep down inside, because I was there, deep down inside, we so want to be united to the Father. That's how we were designed. And so I encourage you to pray that prayer with me. Now, guys, let me say this. The way into a relationship is the way on. Well, what do you mean, Sharon? Well, you know, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we also ask him to be the leader of our life, right? But yet the truth and the reality is that there are many of us, including myself, we've got areas that we're like, come be Lord of everything except for this area here, right? I don't think I want you in there. Don't, you don't have to be Lord of that area. You know what we're demonstrating there? A closed heart. See, you thought it was only for somebody who had not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Oh, no. It hits at the condition of our heart. It's an attitude by which we approach the throne. It's an attitude by which we approach God's word. And so it becomes very important for us to recognize when that crops up. And just in case you're like, oh, that's not me, that can't be me, Sharon, let me give you a couple examples, right? When somebody says something and they make you angry, <laughs> right, they do something that hurts you, right? And then you go to God's word and God's word says that we are to forgive them, that we're to turn the other cheek. And then you sit back and you go, I don't think so, right? I'm not doing this. They'll hit me on the other side, right? Or how about this? How about this one? How about that you walk out and you're going to Costco? <laughs> you're going to Costco, right? And you have your mask on and you're walking there and then there's somebody there that doesn't have a mask on. Everything inside of you wants to correct them, right? Everything inside of you wants to go, hey, dude, put your mask on. What you doing? Right? Or maybe you're the person who doesn't want to wear a mask, right? <laughs> and so you're like, this is my right. I don't have to do this, right? And so here we go. If you haven't got this, go look on social media. This actually happened in the Costco where people were screaming and yelling at each other over face coverings. Guys, whether you wear them or you don't, it makes no difference to me. Here's what I'm going after. I'm not going after masks. I'm not making a statement. What I'm telling you is the condition of your heart. It's the condition of your heart because the word of God says to us, that we are to love our brother, that we're to be long-suffering with them, that we are to be kind and helpful and give them extra grace, right? And so these are things that we struggle with. These are areas of closed-heartedness that God wants to talk to us today. And I have found when the Holy Spirit, which he does do this, he does point it out that our job is to repent. Our job is to turn around and say, whoa, okay, that's hard. I shouldn't be like that. And then for me, sometimes I can't even get over that hump and said, Holy Spirit, just come and help me to be able to get over that one, right? To be able to, to have that extra measure of grace, that extra measure of love that you require. And that's what the Lord is looking for, for hard-heartedness. When we run into that, he's saying, just, just repent. Bring it before me and ask me to help you change your heart. The second thing our parable talks about that can help us to open up the the ability to hear God, right, is uh, this ability uh, that, ha that deals with our busyness, our busyness. You and I are way busy. We're masterminds and multitasking, right? And so the way we counteract this busyness is to be able to, number two, allocate time to listen. You have to give God time to listen. He's speaking all the time. 
You just need to get on the wavelength with him. It's kind of like when you're in a car and you just dial up that dial, right? I'm dating myself here. But it helps to tune in, doesn't it? You're tuning in to what he's, what he's saying. And so we need to allocate that time. Schedule it, if you may, uh, for God. And I can honestly tell you that, that God wants to hear from you throughout the day. But there's a deeper, a richer place he wants you to drop to so that he can really uh, start to talk to you, right? That he can start to open up your understanding on things. Now, again, that parable that we learned about uh, the condition of the second soil was uh, this, this condition where, where uh, the, the word fell on rocky soil, right? Rocky soil. And it kind of sprung up, but it didn't have any uh, ability to, um, to grow from there. It couldn't, you know, it couldn't get the moisture, so it dies, right? Now, here's Jesus' interpretation of it. He says, those on the rock, right, are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no roots. Important. No roots. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. Ouch. Really? Yep, they fall away. And so now this becomes very important, important to us because Jesus wants to point out that sometimes our faith is enough to get us started, but not to take us through to the long haul, right, when the time of testing comes. So this will be very important to test your roots and see where they are. Now, I happen to be a gardener. I love gardening, right? I don't know, I just, I just really enjoy it. And you know, one of my favorite things to do is to go to Lowe's <laughs> uh, once a week. And uh, I don't buy new plants. I buy plants that are on the clearance, right? And so when I go to look for plants, I don't look at the leaves. I don't look at the pot. I don't look at those exterior things. I am looking to see, do they have good roots? Because I know if they have good roots, then I can work with them and put them in good soil and they will thrive. Father's like that, right? And the Holy Spirit is telling us we need to attend to our roots here. See, if you and I want to live a life that fulfills the God-given purpose that we have, we have to attend to our roots, make sure they go down deep, that they're healthy. Because if not, testing comes. And testing comes to each and every one of us. And it's called life right? It's called life. And when it hits, it's, it hurts. It hurts, guys. And the deeper your roots, the more you're able to draw upon the moisture, the, the love and the, uh, the, the fullness of Christ, and you can weather the storms no matter what they are. So we go, well, gosh, how do we get these strong roots, Sharon? By being able to allocate time to sit and to talk with him, right? Like, here you go. Uh, my roots grow. They, they didn't just automatically grow, right? They started to really grow and deepen when I decided, being not a morning person, that I would get up extra early before the sun got up, and I would go ahead and I would uh, start to, to uh, pursue the Lord in the morning time. So I read his word and I journal, you know, what I think he's teaching me, and I talk to him. It's in that place that I talk to him about how I feel, right? I talk to him about my fears and my frustrations and, and my uncertainties, and I just, I just pour out everything inside to him and let him know how I feel. And it's in that place where I'm communing with him, right, that I begin to discover, because I can hear him say, you are a child of the God Most High. I love you. And it's there that I begin to understand who I am, not what the world says I am, but who he says I am. And strength begins to arise inside of me. And it's there, guys, that I begin to understand his voice versus my voice or the world's voice, right? I'm able to distinguish. Why? Because in the secret place, in the quiet place, I communed with him and my roots started to go deep. And so when the times of trials and tribulations came on me, I was able to survive them. I actually thrived in them. They're actually parts that I carry with me that make me who I am today, right? So when we spend time with the Lord, look what he says happens to us. Happy is the person who loves the Lord's teaching. He or she thinks about those teachings day and night. He is strong like a tree planted by a river, right? It produces fruit in season. Its leaves don't die. Everything he does will succeed. Whoa, right? It's because we can start to hear what the Father is telling us, 
right? He's our source. He's our strength. And so we need to understand that uh, we need to make spending time with him a priority. You need to allocate that time. You cannot define his voice if you don't have that quiet time. It's just impossible, right? All right, so the next uh, thing that our parable taught us was the third type of soil that we encounter, and that was the one with the thorns, right? And that's the weeds and how they grow up in the, you know, up in the, the, uh, the place where they were sowing seeds and that they begin to choke the plant off and actually kill the plant, right? And so what we're going after here, this third attitude that I think is being described is what I call a divided heart, right? The third one is, so how do you handle a divided heart? Well, you got to just simply eliminate the distractions. Just simply eliminate the distractions in your life, right? I mean, we have so much going on in our brains. They just constantly run like, it's like a hamster on a wheel. Even some of you today, you're thinking about, uh, well, when she's done, when this service is done, I've got to do this, 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 and this, right? You know, and so we're constantly doing that. But what happens is, we can't stay in the moment. You can't stay in the moment. And, and here's the beauty of staying in the moment. The Holy Spirit can speak to you. When your mind is just on the seed, on what's being said, the Holy Spirit can come in and he can start talking to you, right? And so we want to stay in the moment. We want to uh, handle these distractions, right? Now, here's how Jesus, uh, he interprets this, this parable, this part of it. The seed that falls among thorns stands for those who hear... Hmm. But as they go on their way, they are choked by, this is wonderful, by life's worries, by riches, by pleasures, and they do not what? Mature. Okay? So here you go. So what we're getting a look here is that uh, there are things that God wants for us, and he wants us to mature. As a parent, nothing gives me more joy than to watch my babies become children and my children become adolescents and young adults and then to become parents themselves, right? Well, that's what God wants with us. He wants our faith to mature, to become mature and to produce what he wants it to produce. And so we need to know that's what the Father is after for us to be able to be mature. And then I believe that Jesus gives us the greatest gift here because he says, hey, wake up because there are three things that's going to get you, that's going to try to choke the life right out of you, try to choke your, your faith. And they are the worries, life's worries, riches, and pleasure, right? So let's just take a moment. Life's worries, what are they? <laughs> Real easy. Coronavirus, the cultural revolution that's going on, right? Uh, it could be trying to make ends meet, not having a job, not having certainty, wondering about the relationships with our family and our kids and our loved ones, right? Worry, worry, worry. I don't even need to explain it. You guys got it right? Life's worries. Riches. Riches are, hmm, does my job pay enough? Is this you know, going to get me where I need to be, where everybody says I need to be? How's my 401k, right? Do I have that money flowing in to, to keep, put me on easy street? Is my car as nice as that next person's or my home? Or how about this? Do I have the latest cell phone, right? Okay, these are all things that are associated with riches. And then lastly, he says, be careful with pleasure. You see, the, the uh, media and our society tells us that life is all about pleasure. Am I happy? Do I feel good? Do I get to do what I want to? Well, you see, that's a very uh, selfish perspective, right? And so there, life is more than pleasure, guys. I'm not saying any of these are bad, but life is so much more. And when these things become your focus, what happens is then we begin to get choked off, literally choked, right, uh, by, these, by these things here. And so Jesus is telling us you need to be careful that they don't, they don't you know, get you, right? Again, I'm a gardener, and so I love to garden. So what I like to do is after I have my time with the Lord, I get my second cup of coffee. And I like to walk amongst the gardens that I have created in my yard, right? And I walk and I, I talk to my plants, I know, I talk to my plants, and I'm there, and if I see, you know, something dead, I'll take it off, and if I see a weed, I pull it out, right? I pull it out, and I walk amongst my garden. Now, people walking along our street, they would look, and they couldn't see the weeds. They simply could not see them, 
until they overgrow, right? My plants, my, my flowers, and they choke them. That's when they'll notice them. But you see, I am the gardener. I love my garden. I care for it. So I know when one weed pops up and it's not supposed to be there, right? Father God is like that. He's interested in you. He's cultivating you. He loves you. He walks amongst your life. He's looking at it. And the Holy Spirit wants to come in and wants to talk to you about the weeds in your life. This is why that communication is so important. Because he wants to talk to you about the weeds that pop up in your life. You know, not to annoy you, but he's going to tug on them. He's going to make them known. Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows if you do not attend to them, they will grow up and they will choke off your faith. And you will not be able to accomplish all that God has for you. Right? And so we need to be able to know that, that God wants us to, to attend to, to our garden with him. So what does that mean then exactly? Well, what that means is that each day you go before him and you walk with him and you let him show you what's going on. And so your quiet time or your devotion isn't a check, I did that one, right? But it's a place you go and it's a place of meditation, a safety place, a place where you can be radically honest with the God who loves you like, like nothing else you've ever experienced. And he doesn't blame you. He doesn't accuse you. He walks with you in loving kindness to help you to understand who you are supposed to be. You see, it's our job to spend time with him, to cultivate like that. If we do not cultivate like that, we cannot see the weeds in our own life, and we cannot pull them out, and they tend to choke off the fruit, the maturity at which God wants us to be. So our parable is challenging us today to sit and to allow the Holy Spirit to examine our heart. And then this last, par the last part of the parable, it talks about uh, the seed that falls in good soil, right? And what happens to the one seed? It becomes a hundred seeds. It multiplies out. And this is what the Lord says about that one. Oh, <laughs> got to introduce your point first. Okay, so with, with, before I get there, one of the things that God is calling out in this last one is for us to be cooperative with him. And so the last point is, Cooperate with what God says. Now we can read about what he said. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. Okay. But the seed on good soil. You don't know how hard this is, guys. Okay. But the seed on good soil stands for those who, what? Have a noble and a good heart. Who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. And so what we see here is Jesus' interpretation. He's saying to us again, that, that we need to be of noble character, right? We need to be noble. You know what noble is? It's knowing who you are. And who are you guys? You are children of the God Most High. I want you to say that. Say, I'm children of the God Most High. I'm a child of the God Most High, right? Yes, that's who you are. You need to remember that. And then the good soil is the heart that goes, I want whatever you want, Jesus, right? I'm going to obey you before you even tell me what to do. This is very important because God speaks to those that are ready and willing to obey. I don't need him to tell me or to convince me. I just need him to, to know that I'm your child and I have a heart that's willing to follow you, so I'm ready. Whatever you want to tell me, right? And when we do this, we actually are adhere to the James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. Now, this is extremely important, right? This is important that we hear the word, that we take it in, and that we actually do what it says. And so the good soil, again, is this obedient heart. It's one who wants to cooperate with whatever the Lord says. Now, I want to end my time with you today. I'm going to end it with you by taking communion. This is not how we were planning on doing this ending, right? And uh, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me yesterday morning and said, no, nope, we're going to take communion today. Uh, you know, this week, and I said, okay, so I called up the staff, and, and they uh, made sure everything was ready for us. Listen, God wants to do something special here, and so those of you online, if you got that juice cracker, whatever it is, I don't care, God's gonna, he's gonna uh, change it for you right where you're at, okay, it's gonna become the communion elements. Those of you that are, it, that are with me today, you were given one of those packaged, uh, se se sealed packages with communion. I'm gonna have you stand up, just right where you are, just go ahead and stand up, 
And why don't you open that up, right? Open that up. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, now while you are opening that up, I want to tell you how I arrived here, right? I want to tell you what the Lord did. Yes, if you need communion elements, just wave like crazy and those ushers will help you. Guys, this is important. So listen, yesterday morning when I was in uh, my time with the Lord, he uh, was taking me through part of the scriptures and I was reading it and it was about when Jesus was crucified. Such a hard passage to read, right? And then it talks about him dying and then it talks about him being laid in the tomb and then the women coming and finding him uh, that he's not there. The angel says to them, you know, he's risen, right? And they run back and tell the disciples who are all hiding because they're afraid. They are hiding in their rooms, in their homes because they are afraid. And so the women tell him that he's risen, but the men don't want to believe the women, right? Matter of fact, there were two of the disciples. They decide to head out from Jerusalem because it is too hot here. But on the road to the Demetrius is where they're walking. On this road, they begin to talk about the things that had just taken place. And they were very confused and they were in pain. They really thought that Jesus was the one and he was crucified. And then these women who say he's resurrected, but how could that be? And as they were walking away from, uh, from Jerusalem, right, and talking, all of a sudden another figure comes alongside and walks with them and says, hey, what are you guys talking about? And so they go, where have you been? You've not heard about what happened to Jesus, right? And so they tell them all the events that have taken place. And as they're walking and they're sharing these events, the, the, uh, the person that had come up alongside said, hey, wait a minute. Didn't the scriptures of the prophets of old, didn't they prophesy that the Christ would suffer and would be, uh, be killed and on the third day would rise again? And he reminded them, and they're like, oh, yeah, dang, Skippy, they did, right? And so as they were reminding them what was going on, they, it was getting late, so they went into a house to eat. And it was there as they were talking, and these two disciples that were running away, they watched the stranger break the bread. And all of a sudden, they're like, whoa, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's here. You see, he had been with them all along. He'd been with them all along. And when they recognized that it was Jesus, and Jesus was with them in the midst of things that they didn't understand, and the pain that they felt, right, it was there that Jesus brought the knowledge and the comfort. And do you know what those disciples did? They got up and they went right back into the fight, right back into Jerusalem, right back to their brothers to tell them, you do not have to be afraid. And so here's what happened. When I was reading all that, the Lord said, tell my people to remember me, to remember what I have done for them. And so today we're taking communion because we must remember what Jesus Christ has done. That's where the power comes from, right? That's where the power comes from. You see, the greatest seed that's been planted in us is that when Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. It's when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. It's him sitting on the, the uh, right side of the Father interceding for us. He walks with us in the midst of the COVID. He walks with us in the midst of all the trials and tribulations that are going on in our country and the pain that people are feeling. God is with his people and he walks with you and he wants to remind you to focus on him. Do not be part of the problem. Be part of the solution by focusing on Jesus Christ and that's who his, he has given us and that's what we need to remember. Remember this. Now you've got your communion ready for you and I want everybody to take it but I'm always mindful that there are people and I told you earlier I was going to give you a chance to come home that God is asking you to come home right and so I'm going to ask you to do something brave here I'm going to ask you for those in my audience I'm going to ask you to raise your hand for those online there's a button that says I raise my hand what are we raising our hands to to accept Jesus Christ to accept the gift of salvation to ask him to be the leader of your life. That's what you're doing. And we're doing this before we take communion so that communion can mean all the fullness of what it was intended to do. So if you're with me right now, I want you just to shoot up your hand real quick so I can see it, so I can pray. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing this? Because the word of God says 
those that confess with their mouth, right? Raise their hand, confess with their mouth, and believe in the heart, so shall they be saved. That's why we do that. All right, good, good, so I see. So here you go. We're going to take communion. And for those of you that raised your hand or you pushed that button to accept Christ, I want you to do this. When we're taking these, I want you to be saying these words, okay? I want you to repeat after me. We're going to do the bread first. Hold up that bread. The bread represents the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us, right? That our sins are nailed there. So we're just going to uh, meditate on that. But those of you that are giving your life to Christ, I want you to say, God, I understand that I put you on the cross because of my sin choices. Yeah. And I can say that and be honest because I feel loved by you. And so I confess my sins to you today. I take this bread to know that you died for my sins. Take the bread with me. walking with us and I thank you that even though I fall short and mine was the hands that put the nails in yours that you wipe away all my sins as far as the east is to the west you remember them no more now father I thank you for that reality that we have all fallen short of the glory of you and so I ask now, Lord, that you would just take that and that you would uh, compress it into the heart so that it would govern all that we do, Father, all that we say. And Lord, we take this juice now. Lift up your juice. This juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ. It represents the new covenant that he offers you and I, that we are now children of the God most high. And so for those of you taking this juice today, I want you to remember who you are and whose you are. You are the Lord Jesus Christ, daughter, son. And so let's take it together. Ready? Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you. I thank you for so much that you've done, that you have marked us. And Father, I know because of the seed that you've sown in me, that you've sown in each one of us, that we are your people called by your name. And because of that, we can walk out and accomplish all that you say. We can do nothing in ourselves. We can do all things with you. And so, Father, remind, remind your people as they walk amongst uh, their family and their friends and at work. Uh, yes, Father, everywhere their feet goes, I ask that you would remind them, Holy Spirit, who they are. And, and that you would put in them that they are to, uh, to be part of your solution for the world, to give love, to give that place of refuge, to, to speak out when they see injustice, but to do it in a way, Father, that brings all men under your leadership. And so, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace today. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. One more scripture I want to go over, and then I got you standing, so I want to talk to you. Uh, I want to lead you in prayer. Not me, Noah. Good, right? You can't sing. So, so that's good. Well, here's my scripture I wanted to share with you. This is the one that Pastor Annie had heard the uh, Father speak to his heart way back when we decided to start this prayer series with you. And so I want to bring it back to you because I believe as we're worshiping, I want you to meditate on this. If my people who are called by my name, that's you and I, children of the God most high, will humble themselves, that means we don't understand things, we will humble ourselves and pray and seek. That means those attitudes that we're in check. We can pray and we can seek my face, which is the Lord's, and turn from their wicked ways, because each and every one of us has that inside, 
then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. That means your sin and my sin, we can be forgiven. Now look what, look what happens when God's people allow God to heal them and to take care of their sins. I will what? Heal their land, right? Heal the land. He does it through us. We are the hope of the world. We're to carry the message of Christ. Now I'm going to uh, ask that you worship with me this one last song, and then I'm going to come back and close us again in prayer. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship. loving kindness towards us, Lord. And Father, I do say every breath that we breathe, Lord, may we honor you. May we give you glory and honor, Father. May every moment, every breath of our life, Father, let it be written in your book. Let it be what it says that you say it's supposed to be. Not our culture's reflection, but what you say, Father. And help us to prepare ourselves to answer the only one that really matters, which is you. And so I ask, Holy Spirit, that this message that was uh, so simply taught today, that you would take it, and in the simplicity of Father, that you would do something with it that we never could have ever dreamed, hoped, or imagined that you were going to do. I thank you, Father, that you have set the vineyard on a hill to be bright, to shine bright, especially in the dark times that we're in, Father. That we would shine, Father, as a beacon of hope, not for ourselves, Lord, but for you. Because you say as we lift you up that you will draw all men onto yourself. And so help us to be the ambassadors. Help us to be the change makers in our community. And we love you so very much. I thank you, Father, for all those that had ears to hear what your spirit was saying today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs>